Hey guys, it's John P. I'm continuing our coverage here at CES 2015. You will never guess who I just ran into. Slash. Okay guys, I'm super excited. You know, I'm always bringing you geeky stuff from the show floor at 20, you know, 2015 CES here. But now I get to bring you like a super rocker, hall of famer, one of the most amazing musicians who ever lived. Just an incredible guitarist, Slash. I, I mean, thanks for being on the show. Uh, thanks for having me. That's a very ex extreme <laughs> introduction. <laughs> we like extremes. Uh, so. First of all, uh, what brings you to Las Vegas? Are you here just to hang out with Marshall or what? I'm just here for Marshall. Okay. Well, that's good. So I got to ask you, when you were on your way over here, did you have any music going? When I was on, uh, yeah, we were listening to some blues, yeah. Oh, and do you remember who it was you were listening to? Um, yeah, I think it was Steve Ray Vaughan and, and uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, Gary Moore. Let me ask you this. Do you get into any country music? Do you like any country? Not big on country music. I mean, you know, Johnny Cash, I like Willie Nelson, a lot of the old old school guys. But uh, as it stands right now, it's become very pop, and I'm not really into it. I think the last uh, song that I heard uh, was, I think, uh, She Thinks My Tractor's Sexy. I'm not sure that's a good one for picking up chicks or anything. But anyway, I heard, <laughs> I heard that uh, when you first heard, I heard that Aerosmith was a big influence on you. When you first heard Aerosmith, it blew you away. Yeah, well, w when I first heard Aerosmith, it was 1975 and it was Walk This Way. And I remember it, but that wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't the deal breaker. What it was was Aerosmith Rocks, that record, which I heard when I was about 13 years old or 14 years old. And that was like a combination of, of R&B and sort of heavy metal that I thought was just the most killer thing I'd ever heard. You know, so. How, uh, I mean, do you remember it being specifically different from other things and well, that you've been listening to? It was it was unique to them, but it, it was it reminded me of uh, and this is a cliche in itself because a lot of people have said this, but it's true. It was a combination of the Pistols, Led Zeppelin, and the Stones. It was great riffs and great grooves, but it was very much Stones kind of oriented rock and roll chord changes, and then it had this sort of punk angst to it, you know, yeah. this dysfunctional teenage thing that I really uh, related to. So. I'm guessing there are a lot of people who would actually list you as one of their influences in the same way, so that's very cool. Um, you've had a wonderful musical career, and lately you've been doing some solo stuff, right? Um, yeah, I started doing solo, well, I did my first solo record uh, in 2010. And then I put together a band to go on the road with that, and it turned out to be one of the best groups of people I've ever worked with. So it's turned more into a band that's more or less led by me over the last few years. So it's Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. Yeah, you've had, a, you've had an opportunity to work with some amazing artists. Uh, anybody, like, just, I, I, I hate to even ask you this, because I know you'll hurt somebody's feeling by not naming them, but anybody really just stand out like, oh my God, that was, that was an awesome person to work with? Well, I mean, they've all been. You know, I mean, everybody's different. Uh, I mean, I think working with Ray Charles in 2000, I think it was in 2007. Um, no, no, I'm sorry, that was 2002. Uh, he was one of the, the, the greatest people I ever worked with because it was Ray Charles and he sort of took me under his wing and uh, it was a great learning experience. But, but working with James Brown was great, working with Iggy Pop, working with Lenny Kravitz, working with uh, uh, Carly, uh, uh, oh shit, now I'm forgetting her name. Uh, I I Carol, working with Carol King, you know, um, working with Motorhead, you know, so I mean, and I could just keep going, they're all really great. I know, it's amazing, amazing career. Uh, so I, I want to switch gears on you a little bit because we've got a fairly intimate setting here. We've got a lot of people crowded around. Um, do you prefer to be in a smaller, more intimate setting when you perform? Like, yeah, a few hundred people packed into a crowded room, or would you rather be in like a monster, you know, uh, venue somewhere? That's a good question. Because we, we, we just did a whole tour of 
arena, uh, outdoor venues with Aerosmith and, and then we did a bunch of arenas on our own and we also did some club dates in Los Angeles. And the thing about club dates is it's great because it's it's immediate satisfaction. It's it's uh, uh, you know the give and take between you and the audience. You get that it's within a fraction of a second. Whereas when you're playing in a stadium, there's a delay. You're the the people you're looking at you can't see as well, and the response that you get isn't as is not as intimate. You know? yeah. So I like playing in smaller places, but it's it's gratifying to be able to turn on eighty thousand people or thirty thousand yeah. people as well. Yeah. But I, yeah, I prefer to do indoor venues that are a little bit more intimate than the outdoor ones. I think the best thing is just to mix it up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of instant feedback and gratification, uh, I know you're really active on Twitter, actually. You got like millions of followers on Twitter. Uh, two questions about that. First of all, uh, do you ever get in, when people say, what's your Twitter handle, you're like, Oh, just go to twitter.com forward slash slash. Like, do you, just, do you say slash slash? Like, wait, wait, is it slash or? I just say at slash. Oh, okay, all right. At slash, that'll work. So, do you do you really get into, do you answer those things? Do you enjoy that kind of direct feedback after a, after a venue? That was the thing that turned me on to using it in the first place. Yeah. It was just being able to relate to an, your your fans or your audience directly without cutting out the middle person. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I put, I put updates. I do all whatever it is that's going on with me professionally on Twitter and then there's I have a lot of uh, fan sites that I follow directly and I have direct messaging with and so I talk to them and tell them personally what's going on and, so and then you can help them amplify their messaging if they like put exactly. something out about you, you retweet it and things like that exactly. cool okay so we are here at Marshall's booth I guess we could give, give them a little bit of love and attention yeah. so Tell me this, you've had a long-standing relationship with these guys, why? What is it just like history, is it technology, what is it you love about Marshall? It, well, I mean, initially it's just the amplifiers, right? Um, I got turned on to the Marshall sound when I first started playing guitar, and you start investigating where certain tones come from and this and that and the other, and a lot of the stuff that appealed to me was all driven by Marshalls. So then the next thing was to get one, which back in those days I didn't have any money yeah. and so it was a, a very coveted piece of gear. Anyway, but uh, that has always been for me, that and the Les Paul has always been uh, the epitome of the sound that I've always heard in my head of what I wanted to do. Now the sound, the sound has changed a little bit over the years, right? Because when you first started it was all basically solid state and now it's like electronic and computerized. Do you prefer, is it that you prefer that older sound? Do you, you how do you feel about the new stuff? Um, I mean, I, I use basically JCM 800, which is a tube amp. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty old school when it comes to that. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, any other any other last thoughts? Anything you want to share with the folks here at CES? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but you got to check out this phone that these guys are coming out with. It's oh, yeah. rad. Yeah. A new phone? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know if that was embargoed or not. Uh, we we may not have been able to say that there. Slash. You guys. <laughs> just kidding. You guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. This was a great episode of Geek Beats. Uh, head on over to youtube.com forward slash Geek Beat TV. Thumbs up on YouTube and follow him at Slash on Twitter. Yeah, and a lot of people haven't been able to hear the audio. Oh, so I know that there's going to be a good quality video. Oh yeah, if you audio. if you've been watching, we'll have great audio on this later on. So that's it. We're out of here. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thanks for watching. We're out of here.